In this video we're going to cover Atari 5200 emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. Alright everybody, in this video we're going to cover the updated Atari 5200 emulation methods using the PC version of RetroArch and the Atari 5200 standalone core. It doesn't have to be used with the Atari 800 core anymore, which makes setup a lot easier and controls actually working properly unlike older Atari 800 uh, emulation builds. So this one is a little bit more straightforward to getting set up now, so let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with Atari 5200 emulation on the PC version of RetroArch, you just need to install the PC version of RetroArch if you have not done so already. So guides here include standalone and Steam versions, so link to these will be in the description below for anyone that hasn't gotten it set up. It includes a number of optional steps you'll probably be interested in, but once you get it installed and configured to your liking, continue along with this guide. Next, for Atari 5200 emulation, you are going to need an Atari 5200 BIOS file. If you happen to own the Atari Vault game for Steam, you can use it to copy an Atari 5200 BIOS file, as well as a selection of games. Unfortunately, they have delisted the game for sale, as the new Atari 50th Anniversary Collection has been released, and I haven't had time to see if you can rip BIOS files from that one yet. So if you happen to have the old Atari Vault program, you're in luck. Otherwise, you can resort to Google, find things that way. I really don't care how you go about doing it. Just don't ask me for illegal download links because, as always, I will not provide them. But once you have your Atari 5200 BIOS file, it needs to be named 5200.rom. And we just need to place that in our RetroArch system folder. So open up RetroArch. Wherever you have it installed, I just have it on desktop for demonstration purposes. But navigate to your system folder and drag the 5200.rom file right on in and it is good to go. Next, you need to source Atari 5200 games. And as previously mentioned, if you have the Atari Vault program, you can rip a bunch of them using that game available on Steam, otherwise again Google. But they could be in a couple of different formats, they could be in .bin, .a52, or you can zip them up. I just have all mine in .bin format because I ripped them straight from Atari Vault. But once you have your game sourced, you can just put them anywhere you want on your computer. It doesn't friggin' matter, just put them somewhere. So, for my demonstration purposes, I'm going to put them in my games folder within my RetroArch demo folder. Awesome. But with your games and BIOS files in place, we are ready to load up into RetroArch and download the Atari 5200 core. So, just boot into RetroArch here. And if you have any controllers you want to be using, you can get them plugged in right now as well. But on the main menu, head into the online updater, core downloader. Find the Atari section here near the top. And we are looking for the Atari 5200 A5200 core, so just get this one downloaded. And once you have it downloaded, you can begin loading up Atari 5200 content. So one method of doing so is to head up to load content, navigate to the directory your games are stored in, choose a game, choose a core, and it should load right up. There we go. Asteroids for Atari 5200, very nice. Now, personally, I don't really care for that method. It's a bit long-winded, so what I like to do instead is make a game's playlist, and my favorite way of doing so on the PC version of RetroArch is to use the desktop menu, so you can either click on Show Desktop Menu here on the main menu or press F5 on your keyboard to do so. Once the desktop menu has finished loading up, you'll see the content browser here on the left, so just right-click, New Playlist, type in Atari, space dash space, 5200, and then press Enter, and you'll be greeted with a new Atari 5200 playlist entry here with the Atari 5200 controller icon. And then in the white space here, right click, add folders, navigate to where your games are stored. Choose select folder. Now for core, A5200, database, Atari 5200. And then press OK and all of your Atari 5200 games should populate the playlist. Now, one great thing about the desktop menu is it will show you if your BIOS file is being detected properly. So, there we go, present 5200.rom. But if you want to pretty up this playlist a bit, you could try to download thumbnails for your games. So, you could just right-click on Atari 5200, download all thumbnails for this playlist. And if your games are named correctly, it will find the thumbnails to download. But if they aren't named correctly, chances are it'll fail, as you can see here. But there we go. Found some uh, cover arts for a few of my games, but not all of them. But that's okay. So what I like to do in these instances is head to GameFAQs, search up the game in question, go to their media section, click on Boxes, and you should be greeted by a nice selection of box arts for the game. 
Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there is an Atari 5200 box art variant available for asteroids, so it's going to get a little more complicated. So, in that instance, I'll just head over to Google, search their images for Atari 5200 Asteroids box art. So, here we go. The game database here has one. So, there we go. I'm just going to tell it to download this box art. So, we'll just save this image. It's in JPEG format. All right, cool. So, now I'll just move RetroArch out of my way real quick so we can see the box art there. So... JPEGs don't work by default in RetroArch. We need to convert this over to a PNG format. So on Windows, just open up Paint, drag the box art in, and then save it as a PNG picture. And you don't need to change the name or anything, just get that format. There we go. So now back over on the desktop menu, get the game in question selected, and then drag the box art right into the box art preview window here, and it will be applied to your game. So there we go. Now Asteroids has a box art. Cool. But once you're done making your playlist and getting the box art supplied, you can just close out of the desktop menu, select RetroArch, press F on your keyboard to make it full screen. And now to get our playlist entry to show up on the left, just click on Restart RetroArch under the main menu. And now we have a new Atari 5200 playlist entry here on the left with all of our games populating it here in the middle. And if we applied box art, they show up over on the right. So there we go. Very cool. And now to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there you go. With that, you have a functioning Atari 5200 emulator on the PC version of RetroArch with which you can enjoy an overwhelming majority of your Atari 5200 games. So, one of the first things to mention when it comes to Atari 5200 is control setup. So, if you head into controls, port 1 controls, you can see what your controls are mapped to for your Atari 5200 controller. So... It can be a bit interesting, so you can customize any of your controls here for any game as you see fit, but it is important to familiarize yourself with these control options to get the most out of Atari 5200 emulation. If you do remap any of your controls, you can head up to manage remap files and save them as a game remap file, so that way they apply to that specific game in question and not the entire, entire Atari 5200 core. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the core options available within the A5200 core here. So going into core options within our RetroArch quick menu. And our first option is our BIOS selection. So we added an official BIOS file during initial setup. So that is what is selected. If you don't have an Atari 5200 BIOS file, there is a built-in high-level emulation BIOS file. But the compatibility with it is not as good as the official, which is why I still included it. Next up, Interframe Blending. I like to turn this one on. It mimics the ghosting effect of old CRTs to better suit Atari 5200 emulation. So, personal preference on how intense you want this effect to be if you want it at all. Next up, Audio Filter. So, if you don't like the harsher sound of Atari 5200 emulation, you can apply an audio filter to soften it up a bit, as well as select the filtering level. I don't mind it personally, so I just leave it off. Next up, controller hacks. So this is required for using things like Robotron 2048. If you want to use a single controller for both um, thumbsticks, you can swap the ports depending on if your game needed to be on the right or left port for the controllers or off for default. Next up, digital joystick sensitivity. Set to auto by default and that should work for most use cases, but you can adjust the sensitivity as you see fit on a manual per game basis. Next, analog joystick sensitivity, same thing. Next, analog joystick response, set to linear. You can switch it over to quadratic, test it on a game by game basis, see which one has a better response for your particular game in question. And finally, analog joystick dead zone, so you can adjust the dead zone for your particular controller here. But that's gonna do it for our A5200 core options. So as always, if there are options you wanna have set for some games but not others, you could go up to manage core options and save them as a game options file. That way they only apply to that game. Now the last thing I wanna cover before we call this video is shaders. RetroArch shaders are very extensive and you could get a really fun look out of all of your games based on any shaders you might wanna use. Now you can head into the shader tab, enable shaders that they aren't already, and make sure you have downloaded them from the core updater. But head into the load tab, shader slang, and begin loading up your shader of choice. There is no such thing as the best shader. It's all personal preference, so just go through them and see which ones you like. So for me, I like to use CRT Easy Mode just because I 
really enjoy the look it gives and you don't have to mess with a lot of stuff. So it just looks like this. But once you have found a shader that you like to use, head back into the shader tab, click on the save button, and save them as a core preset so that way every time you load up an Atari 5200 game, that is the shader that will greet you. And that's going to do it for Atari 5200 emulation. Much easier to get set up and functioning compared to the old A800 core, as things just work properly and you don't have to worry about what timing you put the BIOS files in anymore. It's just great stuff. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your Atari 5200 emulation projects up and running to your liking. Now here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub and notification button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I always have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. Y'all are the truest of champs. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.